Bio students, welcome to just a quick video about the fatty acid composition graphing assignment. And you're going to be thinking about does the composition of fatty acids determine the usability of different fats? There's two uh, state of matter properties that you're going to be thinking about, smoke point and melting point. Smoke point is sort of like the boiling point of fats, except because they are nonpolar large molecules they combust rather than evaporate, hence the smoke. Melting point is when a fat will transition from a solid to a liquid, um, and this is pretty important in terms of the usability of food shelf life in terms of how long the food will stay good for. Solid fats tend to be better for texture and have longer shelf lives, and smoke point is also useful for you to think about in terms of cooking applications at home. Now, there's two different types of fatty acids that we are going to talk about today. One are saturated, where you have a long hydrocarbon chain, bunch of C's, all saturated with single bonds to hydrogen. And then you can have unsaturated fatty acids that can be mono or polyunsaturated fatty acids based on the number of double bonds. Note that this is a good example of a cis double bond in a fatty acid because both hydrogens are on the same side of the double bond. So the graphs that you're going to be making are going to be looking at the smoke point and melting point as your x-axis and then you're going to be graphing the sat fat, monosat, and polysat for each of these fats. Now that's going to be a little bit tricky because probably you have not had a lot of experience doing multiple um, variables on one y-axis. So I'm going to explain how you can do that right now by showing you an, exa an example excuse me, of what your graph might look like doing a simple Google drawing. So I'm going to go to insert, I'm going to go to drawing, I'm going to do new, whoops, it's not quite what I want, and I'm just going to simply create a graph. My suggestion is you draw these out it will be a lot easier. So on my x-axis I am going to have smoke point and that's moving degrees of Celsius, not a corporation, and maybe I have butter whose smoke point is roughly uh, 150 degrees Celsius. It might not be that. You then are going to put on your y-axis percent and what we're going to do with this is now create some symbols for each of our types of fat. So butter tends to be very high in saturated fatty acids. So it's going to have a really high percent here. I'm going to create a new symbol, triangle, for mono unsaturated fatty acids. I'm going to make this yellow. And then finally, I'm going to have my third symbol or my third data point for my polyunsaturated fatty acids, and this is going to be green. So I have three data points for 150 degrees Celsius. Um, now I'm going to look at another data point, and it is going to be mm, olive oil. Olive oil has a smoke point of about 225 degrees Celsius. I'm just making that number up right now. But alternatively, when we look at the percent of different types of fatty acids, we see that maybe olive oil and has high levels of mono and polyunsaturated fatty acids and has a very low sat fat composition. So when you go to answer questions regarding what factors might influence melting point and smoke point, you're going to be looking across the distribution and the pattern of each of these different types of symbols. If I see a positive correlation between smoke point and monosaturated fatty acids, or mono, mono unsaturated fatty acids, I'm probably going to see my yellow triangles increasing. And if there's a negative correlation between sat fat and smoke point, I'm probably going to see these red dots go down in terms of their percent as I increase smoke point. Um, let me know if you have any questions. I am here to help, and I will see you guys on Friday.